Hi, very nice to meet you. In this lecture series, we are going to discuss about the microprocessor and microcontroller. In this lecture, we are only focusing on the introduction to microprocessor. Comes on the introduction to microprocessor, we are only discuss the history and application of the microprocessor. How the microprocessor can develop? The history tells us that it was the ancient Babylonians who first began using the apagus. Apagus in the sense a primitive calculator made of bits in about 500 BC. The simple calculating machine eventually sparked a human mind into the development of calculating machines that use gears and wheels in 1642. The giant computing machines of the 1940s and 1950s was constructed by using the relays and vacuum tubes. Next, the transistor and solid state electronics were used to build a mighty computers of 1960s. Finally, the advent of the integrated circuit. The advent of the integrated circuit led to the development of the microprocessor and microprocessor based computer system. How? It how the microprocessor can be used for the computer. Yes. What is basics of the microcomputer? The microprocessor is a brain of the computer that has been implemented on the semiconducting chip. That means it is an integrated circuit. This microprocessor concept can be implemented in the integrated circuit. It is the brain of the each and every computer. How? that comes the bad combination of micro and processor. Micro in the sense is extremely small. What is the processor? It can go into performing the some processing. Then the processing in the sense that going into addition, multiplication, division, arithmetic and logical operation can be performed in a single IC chip. That's why it's called as the microprocessor. Micro means is extremely small. Processor means it can perform in some processing in the names of arithmetic and logical unit. The processor means a device that processes whatever in a form of binary number. It can only support the binary numbers, zeros and ones. To process means is a manipulate. Is already I told that the process means is a manipulate. The manipulation is said we are going to perform some operation in this arithmetic and logical operations. Okay, clear? Now, how this microprocessor can be used in this CPU? Okay, first, what is the heart of the computer? The heart of the computer is everybody is known. This is the CPU. What is the CPU stands for? CPU stands for central processing unit. It's going to perform all processing in this central unit. That's why it's called as a central processing unit. What is present in the CPU? Yes, it's already I told that the evaluation of the integrated circuit. This integrated circuit, everything is fabricated in a single semiconducting material. Yes, this is the semiconducting material. This semiconducting material, that means this integrated circuit is contained number of transistors. Okay, it is manufactured by using the number of transistors inside the single chip. Is the evaluation of the integrated circuit. This integrated circuit to caps you inside the metal. Inside the metal. This is called as the central processing unit. Yeah. In this evaluation in 1971, the Intel Corporation is first released the bald pulse microprocessor. That's why in this lecture, I only concentrate on the Intel processor. Apart from the Intel processor, there are lot of processors are there. AMD processor, Motorola, and any comes under a lot of processors are used in the computer as well as the lot of processor can be used in this mobile phone is also, smartphone is also. Here we are only discuss about the evaluation of the Intel processor because of in 1971, Intel Corporation released the first world first microprocessor. Okay, clear? This, this is the Intel processor. This is the side view and back view of the processor. Next, what are the different processors available in your market? There are three different processors. One is a socket processor. This processor can be fit above the socket. Next one is pinless processor. Next one is slot processor. This slot processor can be fitted into processor slot. 
okay clear these are the different processors are available in this market one is processor circuit this uh, processor can be fit into the circuit next one pinless processor next one is slot processor this slot processor can be fit into the processor slot okay next we are going to see the development of inter processor i can speed it is divided into five categories the first one is a first generation microprocessor this first generation microprocessor is taught in the year of 1971 to 1973 in this generation they were designed using the pmos technology this technology provide low cost slow speed and low output current and was not compatible with the ttl logic the ttl logic in the sense transistor transistor logic okay clear in next one is a second generation microprocessor in the second generation microprocessor can be developed in the year of 1973 to 1978 in this microprocessor they were used nmos technology okay this nmos technology what is the advantages of the nmos technology it offers faster speed and higher density than the pmos technology and it is also compatible with the ttl technology okay next the third generation microprocessor it introduced in the year of 1978 to 1980 here we are using the hmos technology is a high density metal oxide semiconductor technology okay clear next one is the fourth generation microprocessor it can introduced in the year of 1980 to 1993 it is a low power version of the hmos technology it is also called as the hc mos okay clear next one the fifth generation microprocessor this evolution is start from here is 1993 it is a high speed processing it is a very high speed processing now we are going to discuss what are the processors are comes under the first generation what are the processors are comes under the second generation and what are the processors are comes under the fourth generation now we are going to start first this is a intel 4040 it is the utmost first processor can developed by the intel it intel is developed in this process in the year of 1971 it was the first microprocessor by intel it can support the 4 bit of data that's why it is called as the 4 bit microprocessor the clock speed was 740 kilohertz it can supporting the clock speed in the range of 740 kilohertz and it has a single ic is has 2300 transistor inside this single ic okay if this processor can execute 60000 instruction per second this huge amount of instruction can be executed in a single second this is a intel 4040 this is a first generation microprocessor Next is an Intel 4040. So this is also a first generation microprocessor. Okay, it is introduced in the same year 1971. It was also a 4 bit microprocessor. It is cheaper than the Intel 4004. Okay, next one. This is the 8 bit microprocessor. Now once again I repeat, there are two 4 bit processor are available in this Intel. This is the Intel 4004. and intel 4040 this is the first generation microprocessor one more 8 bit processor is there it is a, it is also a first generation microprocessor it is a intel 8008 it is introduced in the year of 1972 it was the first 8 bit microprocessor the clock speed of the 8008 is 500 kilohertz it can execute 50000 instruction per second okay clear it is intel 8008 is the first generation next this is the intel 8080 this is the second generation microprocessor it is introduced in the year of 1974 it is also supporting for the 8 bit this is the 8 bit microprocessor the clock speed was 2 megahertz okay each and every generation can develop the clock speed can increase the clock speed can increase in the sense the clock frequency can be increased in the sense the speed of the processor can be can also increase the speed of the processor can also increase that's why this clock speed can be evaluated in the generation by generation and is also this processor is contain 6000 transistors can be available in this single chip next one this is the second generation 
This is Intel 8085. This is the second generation microprocessor. Clear? In the second generation microprocessor, here after the evolution can be started. It is introduced in the year of 1976. It can support the 8 bit of data. That's why it is a 8 bit microprocessor. The clock speed becomes 3 MHz. This, eight in, this Intel 808 piece contains the 8 bit data bus and 16 bit address bus. And it contains the single IC is contained 6500 transistor inside the single chip. And also, the great thing in this per second, it can execute 7,69,230 instruction per second. How much of instruction can be executed per second? This is 7,69,230 instruction can be executed. It could access the 64 kilobyte of memory and it also have the 246 instruction. Clear? Next, we are going to see about the 16-bit microprocessor. In the 16-bit microprocessor, the first 16-bit microprocessor is 8086. It's the third generation microprocessor. Now, till now, we are using this, the evaluation of the 8086 microprocessor. Inside the Pentium, sorry, this inside the Pentium. Which processor can available? This is 8086 in the name of 80586. This is the evaluation of the Intel processor. It can introduce in the year of 1978. It was the first 16-bit microprocessor. The clock speed is the 4.77 MHz, 8 MHz and 10 MHz depending on the different versions are available. It has 16-bit of data bus and 20-bit of address bus. And the single chip is contained 29,000 transistor inside the single chip. And also it can execute 2.5 million instruction per second. The version can be increased. The generation can be increased. The evolution can be increased. The frequency is also increased. And also the number of transistors inside the IC is also increased. And also the execution of instruction is also increased. And it could access the 1 megabyte of memory. It had 22,000 instructions. Okay, clear? In upcoming lecture, we are only focus on the 8086 microprocessor. This is very, very basic 16-bit microprocessor. This evaluation of the 8086 microprocessor is till now. We are using the Pendium and Core i3 is evaluation of the 8086. That's why we are going to concentrate on the 8086. Okay. Many of them have some doubt. Why I am going to study this Intel 8086? Why I am not studying this core i3 or core i5 and core i7? Nobody can get a great thing in a single stroke. It's not possible because if you are the basic is strong, then only you are going to get a great thing. Okay, that's why this is a basic one. This is a 16 bit. That means the first 16 bit microprocessor. That's why in our lecture, we are only concentrate on the Intel 8086 microprocessor in detail, how it works. In future, after studying this concept, you go and search which processors are available inside the Intel Pentium and go through the architecture of the processor. Then only you are easily understand the working principle of the each and every processor. That's why in this lecture, we are only concentrate on the Intel 8086 microprocessor. Okay, clear? Next, Intel 8088. This is a third generation microprocessor. It is a cheaper version of the 8086 microprocessor. Okay, it has a 16-bit processor. Okay, it is introduced in the year of 1979. Next, Intel 80186. The evolution is starts. 80188, third generation. It is introduced in the year of 1982. It is also a 16-bit microprocessor. The clock speed can be increased in the range of 6 MHz. Okay. In 80188, it is a cheaper version of the 80186. Okay. Next. Intel 80286 is the third generation. It is introduced in the year of 1982. It was a 16-bit microprocessor. The clock speed in the range of 8 MHz. It has a 16 bit of data bus and 24 bit of address bus. It could access the 
16 MP of memory and it has the 134,000 transistor can be implemented in this single chip. Clear? Next one is 32-bit microprocessor. Okay. In this 32-bit microprocessor, it can supporting a with 32-bit data. It's Intel 80386. It's a 4th generation microprocessor. It is introduced in the year of 1986. It was first 32-bit microprocessor. It has a 32-bit of data bus and 32-bit of address bus. It could address 4 GB of memory. And it has the 2,75,000 transistors inside the single chip. The clock speed can be increased. Already I told you the generation is evaluated. The clock speed is also increased. If your clock speed is increased, means that the processor speed is also increased. This is a 16 megahertz to 33 megahertz depending on the various versions are available in this processor. Okay, next one, Intel. 80486. This is a fourth generation microprocessor. It can be introduced in the year of 1989. It was also a 32-bit microprocessor. It is a, it has the 1.2 million transistor inside this single chip. That's why the clock speed can be increased in the range of 16 megahertz to 100 megahertz, depending upon the various version. Okay. In this processor, it has the inbuilt cache memory was introduced in this generation. Okay, clear. Next one, the Intel Pentium. Everybody is known. Intel Pentium is a fifth generation microprocessor. It is introduced in the year of 1993. It was a 32-bit microprocessor. It originally is named as 80586. Already I told that 8086 is the basic of the old Intel processor. That's why in our lecture, we are going to see the 8086. This is Intel Pentium is originally is named as 80586. The clock speed was 66 MHz. It has a 32 bit of data bus and 32 bit of address bus. Clear? Next is Intel Pentium Pro. This is the fifth generation. It is introduced in the year of 1995 and it is also a 32 bit microprocessor. It had the 21 million transistor. It also has a cache memory inside the processor. Okay, clear? Next. Intel Pentium. This is a slot type processor. Okay, the clock speed becomes 233 MHz to 500 MHz. It could execute 333 million instructions per second. It is introduced in the year of 1997. Clear? Okay. This Intel Pentium to Xeon and the evolution is goes back, goes, 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 goes. The clock speed has also increased. The number of transistors inside the chip is also increased. Next, Intel Pentium 3. This is also I like that the frequency can be increased. Intel, Intel Pentium 4. Okay, it is introduced in the year of 2000. The clock speed in the range of gigahertz, 1.3 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. It has the 42 million transistor inside the single chip. Next, Intel Dual Core. It is introduced in the year of 2006. It is a 32-bit or 64-bit microprocessor of that. How it is a dual core, it has a two separate microprocessor can be fit into a single chip. It can be interfaced by using the BIOS interfaces. Okay, clear? Next, 64-bit microprocessor. These are the 64-bit microprocessor. Each processor clock speed can be vary. If your clock speed can be vary means the, the speed is also increased. The number of transistors inside the chip is also vary. This is called as Intel, Intel Core 2, Intel Core i3, Intel Core i5, and Intel Core i7. Now we are using the Intel Core i7. Many of your system has the Intel Core i3, Intel Core i5, and Intel Core 2. Okay. In many of your mind. Now, this processor is only using for this computer. Everybody's mind has the same question. The computer is only using the processor. Where, what is the other application of the processor? Just think. Whenever your processing can be take place, whenever your any data can be processing, the processor is the main part. This is the heart. Clear. 
now we are going to see the what are the different application of the processor okay that's why we are going to concentrate on the basics okay not only for the computer not only for the your motherboard not only for your mobile and many other application it has the microprocessor the simple some example i given here the examples are the cal calculators we are going to add two numbers 2 plus 4 is equal to 6 how it can perform we are giving the number in the form of 2 the system can accept this data in the form of 2 no it can accept in the form of is a machine language it can perform it can understand which operation we are going to perform addition subtraction multiplication and division okay that kind of application the microprocessor is essential in this micro, in the simple calculator no need for the higher microprocessor is a basic microprocessor enough okay as like that this is a ac remote in this ac remote the processor can be available inside the ac remote as well as the processor is present in the acs also clear okay how the ac remotes are what now we are going to increment the temperature how increment can be performed the processor only the take place the processor can be only the increment of the temperature we are going to send the rf signal to the ac this rf signal can be received from the ac and ac can find the which increment or decrement can be performed okay like that the traffic lights how much time the red can display how much time the green color can signal can be shown this kind of any processing this any kind of this kind of any automatic system the simplest system if you reduce the human work if you reduce the human things this microprocessor can support these are the some of the applications calculator accounting system game machine instrumentation traffic light controller multi user multi function environment military application communication system and remote controller wherever you are using the automatic system wherever you are uh, they are simplifying our work this microprocessor is a heart okay now your mind is asked some questions which processor can used in this ac remote if i open your ac remote some processor is there it is not a 8086 it is not a 80186 this is not a core i2 this is not a, not a core i5 this is some basic processor in the different names but the working principle of the microprocessor is the same that's why in this lecture we are going to see the 8086 microprocessor it is a simple concept of 16 bit microprocessor this is 8086 this is the evaluation of the all other microprocessor now till now we are using our computer that's why in this lecture we are only concentrate on the microprocessor clear thank you